Well, I decided to get out early this morning and go try out a new lake and see just how effective chicken is on some different water. Uh, I fish Lake Watery and Lake Wally a lot with this bait, also Mountain Island, but uh, Lake Norman, I haven't spent that much time on trying it out since I began using it in 2020. So today, we're gonna see how strawberry jello chicken performs side by side with white perch on Lake Norman in North Carolina. All right guys, so here's the deal. Lake Norman is huge. It's about 33,000 acres. So I've got to narrow down where I'm gonna go. I've got a good idea of what I wanna try. I've got a creek arm that I'm gonna go into. It's got several forks, several branches off of it. I'm gonna roll the dice, pick one of them, go to it and start out there. Oh, y'all know what's in there, don't you? You know what's in there. Jello chicken. A few pieces of goodness out. Mm. We're gonna try it up here on Lake Norman. We're gonna see if this stuff works here. I'm fishing a place I've never been to before in my life. Now I've been on the lake, but I've never been in this cove, this creek arm. So I'm gonna give this a try and see if this stuff is universally good. I don't know. I do know one of my mentors, Mac Byron, has used chicken up here for years and it works. He swears by it. So I'm gonna give the jello combo a try and see how it performs. Marked a few fish in here. Mark some bait. We're gonna see if there's any fish in here that will eat this chicken. I'm gonna try this stuff out in some different places, different lakes. This would be one of them. <clears throat> well guys, I gave it about 45 minutes. Never had a bite, never had a sniff, never had anything on the catfish rods or the perch rods. So I uh, decided to drop my trolling motor in the water. And I'm gonna make a slow troll back through here. I'm going even shallower in the back of this creek. Gonna try this out before I make a move. I just, uh, there's still a lot of stuff on the sonar, so uh, I'm gonna drag some baits through here real slow. It may just be a thing where you gotta hit them in the face with it, especially if they're inactive. So, I'll give that a shot for a while, see what happens. Boom, guys, got one going right here. Boom, boom, hooked up, hooked up, baby, hooked up. It's gonna be a mess. I just got my rods out in a new location. The back of the one creek arm I was in was not working. I'm in a new place here, trying to keep him out of this planer board. My chest got in the water. There we go. There we go. Good fish. Good fish. Get him over here. There he is. There he is. Good fish. Good fish. Got one in the boat. And guys, that is on the chicken side. Just a little FYI. A little FYI. Blue cat, like Norman Blue. If he's going to eat them. That would be the one to eat right there, guys. For now, it's going back. Well, guys, after a couple of hours of fishing, that's the first fish I put in the boat. I tried that one spot anchored for about 30 or 45 minutes. I made a slow drag in the back of that arm of this creek and uh, didn't get a thing. Came out to some deeper water, but I wasn't marking a lot of fish. So I came back into the other fork of this creek arm. There's more fish back here and uh, making a drag through here. It looks like more catfish arches too. So I uh, put that one in the boat fairly quickly actually before I even got my other baits out. So it was good to get one, a good Lake Norman blue. It came on chicken, was on the chicken side of the boat. So 
Uh, it's only one in the boat so far, but uh, I'm going to keep making this drag out of here. Wind's kind of intermittent. Uh, it, it's it's on and off, up and down, nothing too bad. So I should be able to maintain a pretty good drift through here. Right now, pulling through about 12 to 14 feet of water. Uh, pretty good bit of fish on the sonar. There's some bait mixed in. Looks like some uh, uh, shad, uh, but it also looks like there's some cats in here. So I'm going to keep trying this for a while. See if we can put another one in the boat. And guys, I think we got one on the planer. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, hooked up. Hooked up. Made a pretty good little pull here, about 20 minutes since we caught that first fish. Get into a little fork in the creek. You got a bite. You got a bite. I'll tell you a little funny story after I get this fish in about this little fork here. Get this rod up here. All right. I am going to do this the easy way. Try not to lose the fish in the process. Keep that line tight, you're okay. I generally don't do that. Ah, let's see which way that one's got one to go. Oh. Which way are we going? Still wrapping. Well, that made it worse. There's one. Okay. Three. What a mess. That's a pain to get that undone. Decent blue. That one came on perch, guys. He's a little bit wrapped. Let's see if I can get him in here in the middle. In between some lines. Maybe across the top of the drift sock. Yes. If he gets unwrapped, he's going to go nuts. Thumb right now. There he goes. Let's get him over here. Happy to have it. Got him in the boat. Simmer, simmer, simmer. Yeah, about a 12 pound fish. That's a good one. Easy, easy, easy. Simmer down. Good fish. Happy to get him in there. Come back alive. Boom. All right, so my funny story about this point. Uh, a little bit earlier, I called my buddy Mike, who lives up here. I always like to call him when I'm up here and say hello, see how he's doing. He's one of the elder statesmen of the catfish community nationwide. And uh, if you've been around catfish world for any length of time, uh, you probably saw him on Catfish One, the old website. And uh, he's a good guy, lives up here on the lake, fishes a bunch, been a guide. Uh, doesn't guide anymore, but uh, decided to give him a buzz. And uh, he asked where I was at. And uh, I said, well, I went to a place probably ain't been into it. He said, well, what made you go back there? And I told him, he goes, well, you're in a good place. He said, I was in there the other day and I caught some fish. And he started telling me about this, going up this creek, this fork, this point. And he said, when your right side planter board goes across that point, you're going to catch fish. And there's a fish in there. And, you know, I just kind of laughed. I said, that's good. Well, guess what? <laughs> the planter board on that side coming right across that point. So, 
Thank you, Mac Byram. Y'all check his channel out. He's got a channel here on YouTube. Mac Byram. M-A-C-B-Y-R-U-M. But anyway, got that one in the boat. It came on um, a perch. So that's two back here. I'm going to keep dragging this. I may reset and go a little bit shallower back in there. I don't know. There's a couple of arms up here in this creek. going to try it. No super duper whoppers, but I'm getting bit catching some fish, marking some fish. So I'm uh, going to keep pulling through here. Covering water is the way to go. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Guys, I think after about three attempts at eating this bait, the fish finally took it. I'm getting way into the back of a creek now. I think about eight feet of water. Never been at this creek arm in my life. But I got a fish. Likely going to be a channel catch just based on the head shake. Not on fire as far as the fishing goes today. This one is on perch. And yes, sir, it would be a channel catch. Good looking channel cat too. Look at that sucker. Nice digging. Made a perch head. <laughs> oh, I'm getting my perch head back, fella. Sorry about that. I hate to do that to you. Sucker loose there. Ooh, some sharp bristles. Hey, that one's in there good. Roll that one out there. Nice healthy channel. Make a lot. That's only three fish, guys. Three fish. A long, long bout of fishing here. I'm gonna put these baits back. I'm gonna put this one back out and drag this out. Just ain't, just ain't on fire. But I'm not quitting. Three fish, two on perch. All right, guys, there's number three in the boat. My grand experiment here, trying to find some fish. Uh, I'm gonna pull this on into the back of this creek here until it pretty much narrows down into nothing. It's getting shallow back here, only about six feet. Not expecting a lot, but just gonna check it out. I'm gonna go back out and try the other side of that fork. Uh, bite's not on fire, marking a lot of fish. Don't know if it's bait, don't know if it's presentation, don't know if it's time of day, don't know if things have just closed down a bit it's pretty cool this morning uh we've got a pretty cool morning uh so not really sure what it is but i'm gonna keep on fishing keep on covering some water that's one of the things about trolling drifting dragging whatever you want to call it moving baits through the water uh with a boat it's a, a good way to cover water and try to figure stuff out and uh so far about the only thing I figured out is it seems like the backs of the creeks have done better than some of the deeper water so uh, that's it for now. I'm gonna keep experimenting. See if I can dial it in a little. All right, guys. I think I got one with a fish on it. Yep. Sadly, I think that fish is in about three other lines. Nature of the beast, I guess. Yep. It's at least in one. Maybe another one. This was on the uh, chicken side. A little head shake. Ah, I wonder he's coming in heavy. He's all wrapped up. There we go. Chicken just fell off. He should be hooked good enough to get in the boat. It's a good channel kit. It's a good channel kit. We'll take those all day long, baby. Happy to get one. Number four, two a piece, two on chicken, two on perch. All right, guys, where do you start on a body of water? This lake's 33,000 acres. Even in the fastest boat, you can't cover it all in the day. So where do you start? Um, I try to find an area that gives me a lot of options. On this particular lake, I went to a creek arm in the upper end of the lake. Uh, generally this time of year, springtime, uh, fish, generally speaking, 
will move to the upper ends of these reservoirs and up into these creeks. A lot of it has to do with uh, the migration of the spawn, uh, going into shallower water uh, to seek out spawning areas. Uh, a lot of fish make a traditional spawning run in the springtime and they go upstream. So those are things that kind of make me lean in that direction. Not that there's not fish on other parts of the lake, there always are, but that's what I try to do. And then I get into these areas trying to, uh, you know, generally this time of the year, springtime, fish are gonna be shallow. I'm not looking for the deepest part of these creek arms. So today's deal, I kind of started in the back and worked out deeper, found out very quickly as I got out to that 30 foot water. I wasn't marking anything on the sonar. I wasn't getting eat up in the shallow water, but I was getting bit, was catching fish, was marking fish. So that's kind of my strategy, kind of what I'm doing today. Uh, and just kind of, you know, not all creek arms, not all creeks are created equal for a variety of reasons. Everything from the water that runs into them, uh, the, the oxygen, the minerals, the food, everything, they're all a little different. So you may have to hop around. That's kind of what I did today. Did some uh, hopping around to some different places and uh, so far, I found a few that are body. All right, guys, got one going on. Perch this time. Just got that other rod back out, baited up. Had this one go. It's not a monster. Feels like it's probably gonna be a channel cat again. But definitely seems to be some back here. Just happy to finally catch some fish. I'm getting into shallower and shallower water back here. It's only about eight feet deep. Yes, sir. Channel Catapalooza. Is he flippable? Yep. There it is. Flipping like crazy. Flipping like crazy. It's back and forth. Perch and chicken, perch and chicken. Yes. No blues, though. Got one back alive. Spinning rod. Uh oh. Guess what? on perch a bite on the perch not a good sign guys perch is winning here Lake Norman perch is winning God I hope Mike Byron doesn't watch this video he will be upset 30 pound Andy monofilament line Ripping lips, super cat spinning rod, and a PC fun chaos spinning reel. The blue, we got us a blue. Simma, 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 simma. Get off your fin. Either size blue cat, either size blue cat. Fish. Good looking fish. Back alive. Well, I made a move to uh, the back of that other creek arm I was talking about. Uh, I rode all the way into the back, super shallow water, and I didn't mark a lot. So I came back out here where it opens up a little bit and I decided to make a pull through here and put that fish in the boat about 10 minutes into the drift. So that's uh, that's at least uh, inspiring, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna keep making a pull through here. There's fish scattered through here. There's not as much bait, but there appear to be more catfish arches down on the bottom. So we will see if uh, we can produce some fish here. It's just dragging real slow, about a half a mile an hour. And uh, you know, a good spread. Equal baits out again with the chicken and the perch. And uh, Chicken was doing pretty good for a while. Parts just kind of got into the lead. That's okay. I decided to fish kind of back in these creeks a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of stuff moving back into the backs of creeks right now in the spring. Uh, crappie, perch, uh, bass, other fish, shad that are moving in here to feed. And uh, so are the catfish. Catfish will follow and feed on them. So that's kind of the uh, thought process on why I'm fishing where I'm at. So. I'm uh, gonna pull this a little while longer. Let's see if we can pluck one more out of here before we're done. I'm gonna check this planer board. It was, I caught that last fish. It was kind of funky. Let's see if there's fish on it. It does not feel like there's any fish on it. Make 
sure though. I think it's cool with it. Sure we didn't have a hitchhiker on here. Nope, no hitchhikers. But it does look like my cork is blown apart. That's interesting. I don't know if the fish did that or it got hung up in something. Kind of crazy. At the end of the world, we will just put the peg at the bottom of it. It'll be good to fish. Be honest with you, sometimes that uh, sometimes that wobble kind of. I had a oop, there goes a rod right there. That wobble can be good for getting fish to hit. That one's a good fish. Uh, that's a good fish. It's actually a better fish, guys. That one stays hooked up. Yeah, sometimes the uh, wobble to a cork. It seems like I get bit on. So I had one on for a while that I was catching a lot of fish on, but I finally get snagged it up and lost it. This sucker is going to the other side. It's acting like a better fish, guys. And this one is on chicken. Red Rail is a PC Fine carnivore. This is on that ripping lips. Super Cat Rod. Oh, yeah, that's a good blue. Good blue, good blue, good blue. Oh, stay there, baby. All right, guys, I'm going to try to boga grip this fish. Oh, yeah, it's a good blue. Ooh. I'm going to net him, I think. He's a little bigger than I thought. Oh, I can get him with the bugger. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I think I can do it. Oh, I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna lose it. Stop, 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 stop. Got it, got it. <clears throat> it's a good fish, guys. Put it right in the bottom of the mouth. well into the teens nice fish guys that's a great one there look at that came on the chicken boys came on the chicken baby grip out he's losing some blood that hole bottom of his jaw started bleeding all of a sudden dad gun let's get him back swimming off good I thought I got that. He was hooked in the bottom of the mouth and uh, came out fine, but sometimes they bleed. Best thing you can do, get them back in the water as quick as you can. Man, that was a good fish right there. It's a good bite. Uh, came on the chicken. Biggest fish of the day on the chicken. I think we may have, I think we've got a total of about seven fish. I'm wanting to say four came on the perch. I think that's right i'll have to go back and add it up but the biggest one definitely on the chicken good slamming bite on that uh, again i i think this stuff works pretty much anywhere where there's mussels in the water uh it just seems to me from the feedback i've been getting from people is that uh, if you've got mussels clams any of that stuff whether they're natural or invasive uh, stuff seems to work and I, I, I think it 
has more to do with the fact that just the, the, the chemical makeup of it. I think that is what the attraction is and why it works. But definitely works up here and uh, definitely working today. Covered a lot of water. There's some, like I said, there's some fish in here, some good arches. I wonder how this would have been earlier in the day had I been out here first thing early. Uh, spent a lot of time in that one creek. Probably shouldn't have but we're just kind of doing some prospecting. And honestly, guys, that's kind of what you have to do in a lot of these situations is uh, you can ride around and ride around and try to find arches and fish. Um, and that's okay if you got time to do it, but sometimes you just got to fish because you never know. Some of the places without a lot of markings and a lot of you know arches and fish everywhere sometimes produce some of the bigger fish. Not always the most, but you know, it can happen. So my point is, um, Sometimes you just got to fish, and that's what I did this morning. Should have, could have, should have, should have, could have, would have. You know, I probably could have wasted some time and done that. Who knows? I might have looked in one or two places, not seen a lot, and left completely and never even looked in here. So that is what it is. Uh, you know, uh, you guys bank fishing is a totally different animal. You, ain't, you can't do that. I mean, you look around me on this lake, there's no place to bank fish unless you're in one of these houses. Uh, there's not a lot of options for bank fishing, so uh, you're a lot more limited. But yeah, in a boat, you can cover some water and move and check some stuff out. Definitely the the pattern I presumed was working with fish being in the creeks, in the backs of creeks. That's what's happening here, and that's what's paying off. So, uh, pretty decent day. It was hard to get to this point. Had to work at it. Not exactly on fire, but caught some fish and... Uh, I'm not complaining. You know, one of the things I think people get confused about uh, when they see me using this chicken for catfish bait, and they they think it's a replacement for natural baits from the waters that you fish. And it's not. Um, but it is a very good alternative in many places. Uh, it's hard to beat natural bait from the waters you fish but if any baits ever done it it's been the chicken uh, whether the strawberry jello has anything to do with it i don't know but it has outperformed natural cut baits repeatedly time after time and i'm fishing these baits side by side on this boat one side of the boat has natural cut bait i've tried it with perch i've tried it with crappie I've tried it with shad. On the other side, I've got an equal number of rods doing the exact same thing. So is, this isn't guessing. This isn't, I think it's better. This is side by, te side by side test repeatedly. Not just one day, not just one trip. This is many, many, many trips. Uh, probably, I probably ran it on the last half of last year's guide trips. There's probably 50 guide trips I ran it on. Uh, but my point is, I'm not saying don't ever use shad again, don't ever use skipjack again. Those baits work great, they're great baits. Um, but for you guys that may be struggling to get bait, you can't throw a cast net, you've got an injury, you can't throw, you don't have a place to throw it, don't have any shad where you're at, uh, you know, where you have access to fish. It's an alternative, it's something you can get out there and fish with, it's something you can have uh, pretty good confidence in that you're going to catch fish. And it's something you can at least start the day fishing with. You may get to the water and go, oh, I can net some shad. I can catch some bluegill. I can catch some skipjack where I'm at. Great. You've got that. And you've got the chicken as a backup or as a, you know, a starter bait, something to jumpstart. So just a little uh, info there. So to make sure everybody understands the perspective on all this. A lot of people get bent out of shape about it. I, I've had some some big time pro staff catfish tournament guys are like it's like their feelings are hurt uh that people are catching fish on it and uh shouldn't be that way should be happy to see people catching fish especially people new to the sport new people to the sport of the future and uh the more we can get them fishing and most of all catching uh we all benefit from that well folks if you made it this far thank you for watching here are a couple more videos that i think you're gonna like I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.